Every time you create a new Jira project, Atlassian presents you with a plethora of templates that can be a little bit overwhelming. So before you create your next Jira project, watch this entire video as I'm gonna give you a breakdown of every template, which ones you should use, which ones you should ignore, and I'm gonna give you my best tips for how to go forward every single time you create a new Jira project. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like, and let's jump into it. So as I mentioned at the beginning, when you create an Jira project, you're typically gonna be presented with a screen that looks something like this, where Atlassian is gonna tell you, hey, we have some suggestions, we have some recommendations for you all, and this is probably gonna be an easier way to create your new Jira projects. However, creating a Jira project is more of an art than a science. And there is no real template that I've seen over my experience that is truly going to meet your requirements. But let's go over what Atlassian gives us. And then again, I'm gonna give you my tips and show you how I actually approach these problems. Well, so when we're trying to create our projects, we're gonna have a couple of things to look at. Number one, there's this made for you section. And this is Atlassian just trying to save you time. This is, hey, here's some new templates that we think you might be able to leverage. Also, there's some templates that you've used in the past. And so it's a little bit of marketing, a little bit of convenience, a little shady from what you asked me, but it's made for you. And Atlassian's again, just trying to help you out, save some time here. Now these custom templates are only available for enterprise customers, which is another shady little tactic that they're doing here, but we'll talk about that in a future video. Software development's where it starts. If you are a team, and this is very simple, this is very, very easy to understand. If you're a team and you're required to have a sprint, right? You're gonna do story points, you're doing agile, you're expecting to have burn down reports, um, story points, sprints, epics, stories, right? All of that whole agileness, then the only, I repeat, the only template that you can use is gonna be Kanban or Scrum. Specifically, if you want sprints and story points, Scrum's your only way. But you can kind of get away with Kanban if you're not ready to commit to the whole sprint thing. But if you are a software team, or any team for that matter, as long as you're doing agile, okay? So don't let the word software here scare you away. As long as you're doing agile and you require the ability to plan a sprint, the ability to estimate your work with story points, right? You're following the whole Agile manifesto thing, then Scrum is going to be the only template that you're gonna be able to use. Every other template that we're gonna cover in this video will be irrelevant because if you meet that very, very easy to understand and determine criteria of I need sprints, I need boards, I need story points, Scrum is the only template for you. Now, everything else, all the other kinds of work now becomes very, very subjective, right? And it really just depends. Okay, so all the other templates are gonna give you a board and they're gonna give you a place to kind of organize your work, okay? And so keep that in mind that there's a very clear distinction whether you need a scrum board or anything else. And so let's assume that you need something else, right? Let's assume that you don't care for sprints. I just need a task tracking tool. I have a team, we have a lot of stuff going on. We need to put them all somewhere. Well, let me show you what other templates are available for you. First, if you wanna unlock all the bells and whistles, I would still recommend you go with the Kanban one. You don't get all the rigor from Scrum, but you still get a lot of the features. Now, if you're like, nope, that's still backlogs. I don't know what any of that stuff is. I just want a board. I just want a place to track my tasks. Well, let's move over to the left-hand side. We're gonna skip service management. That's not relevant for this video, but just know, quick honorable shout out, service management is for like IT help desks. This is gonna be a different product. It's not Jira, it's Jira service management. And it's gonna have templates specially designed for IT service help desk type of thing. So we're gonna skip that one. And we're gonna look at the long list of work management, product management, marketing, human resources, finance, design, personal, operations, legal, sales, analytics, IT facilities, and nonprofits. There's a lot of templates. And within all of these categories, we have a lot of templates as well. Now, you can read through all these templates. Atlassian has done a pretty good job, right? So you can click into any of these, and I recommend you now click on the template here so that it gives you a breakdown of what you're gonna get. And every single one of these templates is gonna be slightly different than the others, and so I recommend you do what I just did so you can see the full detail. But for example, let's say you are a marketing team and you need some sort of email campaign. Well, this one's gonna create these work types for you. It's gonna create an assets work type, it's gonna create a task and a subtask, and then, the workflow, so those columns that are gonna be on your board automatically are gonna be this ideating, content development, QA, and review, testing, approve, and launch. Now keep in mind that this is what Atlas is gonna give you. So the moment you hit that use template button, right, the moment we come up here and we click on this use template here or down here, then Atlassian is gonna give us this project 
that is pre-configured with these word types and these vertical columns. And that's okay, right? That's, that's a good starting point. However, here's where you meet a very interesting junction in the road because this is going to apply to all the templates in this video. And that is when you pick a predetermined template by Atlassian, you're accepting a way of work, right? And Atlassian does this because, hey, we want you in the tool, we want you productive, we don't want you to feel overwhelmed, and we're gonna give you like an 80% solution that's gonna get you 80% of the way there. And for most teams, two thumbs up, that's gonna work so really, really well, and I applaud you, right? Because it's gonna get your feet wet, it's gonna get you going in the right direction, and it's gonna do what you need it to do. But that last 20%, you're probably gonna tweak stuff. You're probably not gonna align perfectly with their workflow or their statuses, or maybe even their work type. The experience of using Jira though is gonna be the same. It's just those names of those columns and what you can create slightly differs. But the board's gonna be the board, the list is gonna be the list, the summary's gonna be the summary. Every template here is going to have the same Jira experience. It's just what how it's pre-configured for you that's gonna change from template to template. So. I recommend, again, as I said a few moments ago, look through them all, right? Go through all of these and go, huh, maybe I want a campaign management. And again, click on it and then click here on template and it'll take you to what you get. So again, this one's missing the assets. This one's just a task. But look at the workflow. The workflow is drastically different, right? And we can jump around, right? We can go to design and we can come down here to get approval for your budget, click into this template, and we're gonna see that we get a task and a subtask, but the workflow is a little bit different, right? And I was cool about this one because we have approvals um, you actually get approval steps in these workflows. So look through them, not just here, because this is kind of like a little bit of a window shopping thing, but until you actually use these templates, you're gonna get the full experience. And so to not make this video overly long, right? Every single one of these has unique templates that are available for you. My two cents, find a template that gets you there, but consider that you're gonna get about 80% of the way and you're gonna have to tweak the work. Right? Most of the time Atlassian doesn't know how your business works. You probably don't even know how your business works. And so you're gonna have to tweak your workflows. You're gonna have to tweak the type of work you collect, the fields, all that stuff gets tweaked. And if you need any help with that, my good friends over at Release Team, link down in the bio, they're available and ready to help you out. So you're brand, so if you're brand new to Jura and you're like, holy moly, this is way overwhelming, don't worry, don't panic. There's partners out there in the Atlassian ecosystem. I have partnered up with Release Team as my preferred partner to go and help you set up your Jira projects. And so don't worry if you're freaking out, um, Release Team's gonna be able to help you out here. Anyways, my two cents, right? Get a solution here that's gonna meet you at least 80% of the way, knowing that you're gonna have to tweak the last 20%. Or if you're like me, who is a little bit more comfortable with Jira, then my recommendation would be always start with a blank project because this is going to give you the minimal amount of pre-configured items, right? Look at the workflow. It's super simple just to do in progress and done because guess what? I'm going to have to tweak it anyways. As I mentioned, Atlassian doesn't know how your business runs. And so you're going to have to tweak these statuses anyway. So might as well start with the blank canvas because if you have a lot of statuses, then you're doing a lot of deleting. You're doing a lot of removing of all the unnecessary stuff you don't need. So I'd rather just start with like a blank slate and then add my solution than to have like a predetermined solution having to remove things and then having to add my stuff in. And so just a little bit easier, I think in my opinion, to start with a blank project, but it all depends on your level of comfort. If you're super, super comfortable with Jira, blank project's probably gonna be the best way. If you're a software team, or if you're a team that needs sprints, Scrum's gonna be the only one. If you wanna have something in the middle, I would recommend you go with Kanban because you do get a backlog. So there's some thinking to your work versus these work management ones, these product management ones, it's what you see is what you get. As you create work, it just shows up in Jira and then you have to work on it. But Kanban at least gives you the ability to hide things in a backlog and Scrum obviously gives you your sprints. Anyways, that's a breakdown of how these templates work for you. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what kind of template you normally use when you create a project. I'm very curious to find out. And if you made it this far and you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit that subscribe button now because we are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and 85% of you don't hit that subscribe button. But there's like 100,000 of you coming to this channel. So if you're watching this and you haven't hit that subscribe button, help me out and hit that subscribe button. Anyways, drop a like, share it with your coworkers, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with everybody you know, and I'll see you in the next one.